Hi, I'm Caroline Weaver from Body and Soul Companion, and we are on the 17th principle of dis decision making and discernment. These are uh, many principles and practices of decision making and discernment. You don't have to do all of them, but I'm just going to review um, where we've been and where we're going because we're kind of winding down. And this is one today we're going to talk about, we're reviewing and then we're going to talk about discernment in nature. And I'm going to give you a link to a walking exercise, walking with God in nature. But first of all, we looked at Jesus's example. I'm looking at my notes here. We looked at Jesus's example. We did the whole first week in scripture about that um, principles, like the underlying principles of making good decisions um, means we're seeking Jesus's example. We're following his example. We're seeking God first. We're discerning as the Holy Spirit teaches us. And also we looked at the Trinity, the Father inside of us in 2 Corinthians. I think it was 2 Corinthians 13, uh, 5? Wait a minute. 2 Corinthians 13, 5, about God being in us, and Galatians 2, 20, about Christ. We've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer we who live, but Christ who lives in us. So we looked at that. We, I talked about the basis of all discernment. Just becoming a discerning person, it really helps to do an examine so we can see consolations and desolations. Where do we turn to the light of God's presence and experience love, joy, peace, those God, God, love, joy, peace, and then desolations where we turn away from the light of God's presence and we um, resist his presence in our life. So that's important of the examine. I've talked about the Trinity already. And um, knowing also just, and I'm going to close at the very end with this, that God can do beyond what we can ask or think according to his power that mightily works within us. We also looked at a clarifying question. So I hope you have your journal there. Always have your journal, your clarifying question. What is one succinct question about um, clarified discernment question? Mine is, should I take this class? So I clarified it. Then we discerned our throughout our life consolations and desolations, just um, just clearing out our life, um, just making sure that all past sins is confessed, and also just looking at where it, where like we felt the consolation of God, and that's going to give you an idea. Decisions that are based on God's calling on your life. And again, I say the Frederick Buchner quote all the time: "The kind of work God usually calls you to is the kind of work that a that you need most to do, and b that the world most needs to have done. The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet." And so that is. We uh, we talked about drilling down to your deepest desires, but before we do did that, we looked at spiritual freedom. Where are the things you're holding on to? And just if it's sin, you dump it. If it's not necessarily sin, but you're still holding on to it above their habits and relationships that you hold on that take a higher priority than praise, reverence, and service of God, will hope opening your hand to him and freedom from those disordered loves and disordered attachments so that we can have freedom for. So we looked at spiritual freedom and in that freedom, we had an exercise. We looked at blind Bartimaeus and he knew what he wanted. He wanted to see. And so we had an imaginative contemplation looking at what do we really want? Just drilling down. we We've opened our hands. We've dumped the sin. You know, we, you know, we kind of, we see the priority of God first and following Jesus's example. So what is that deepest desire, that thing that you need most to do, like what you really want to do, what God wants you to do, delight yourself in the Lord. That's, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And then we gathered information 
I did that. I emailed the leader of the class, found out more information, and then we discerned through memory. We um, looked at just memories of time where we may have made a similar decision. God brought to mind and how, what was the result of that. Um, decision making with our feelings, intuition, uh, hearing God's voice, reason, our minds, making that pro and con list, and then how we felt it in our body. And then through our imagination, imagining taking one course or the other, taking the course, if it's a yes, what would your day look like? If it's a no, what would your day, or if you have that alternate path, what would your day look like? So we imagined that. And then I led you through a discernment and community. So I'm doing a big review, probably should have done it after this nature thing, but we are going to look at, and this is an exercise specifically that is with a woman name. I've mentioned her before, Elizabeth Liebert, and she's an expert in discernment and decision making the Ignatian way. And the book is called The Way of Discernment, Several Practices. So I've, for the most part, have kind of um, done the practices the way I've done them, but she, she's informed many of the practices that I've developed. But this one, I might just follow her practice just straight through, except for I'm going to give you a link to Walking with God in Nature from Pray As You Go. So um, just a preparatory thing. Sometimes we can sit there and stew and write in our journals and and be in our heads and even in our hearts a lot, but sometimes just moving our bodies and getting outside. This is specifically discerning in nature, but even just getting out and moving. Ignatius was big on that before he even knew that that was important way to integrate yourself. Um, he's, he will say, and if you've been following my uh, spiritual exercises, he would say, you spend your time in meditation in God's word. You're in your heart, especially. And then you take a 15 minute walk or take a walk. That, that was one of the things he suggested. Because for me, I can have a prayer time sitting down and then I'll go outside and I'll take a walk and everything integrates. Sometimes I'm able to hear God's voice so much more easily when I move. <clears throat> Sometimes I even do direction sessions with people walking with them. I have a, a child that is much better able to share his heart when he walks. So just, you can put those that in your needles and knit it, but we're specifically looking at movement, incorporating your body, but also looking at nature and beholding God's creation. So I invite you to close your eyes and to breathe slowly. Oh, I should mention, I'm going to walk you through this. And I just will get you into God's presence, but then I'll walk you through it and then you're going to go do it. Because, and, and if you want, you can, you can take this, you know, YouTube's on an app on your phone. So if you want to listen to me walking you through it, but specifically, this isn't for sitting down in front of your computer, listening to me. This is for going outside and walking. And if you can find a nature place, that's really great, but nature's outside, so you can walk in your neighborhood and just enjoy what's in your neighborhood nature-wise. So that's the preface. So I invite you to close your eyes. And even at this point, why don't you go on out, just turn off the video and go to the place that you want to take that walk from. You might want to be just on your porch, your front porch of your house, and you're going to walk out in nature. So you can turn off the video, pause it, and I'll prepare you. So I invite you to close your eyes. You're outside, you can be sitting or standing, wherever you feel comfortable. And breathe slowly, breathe in the 
outside air, fresh air. And exhale your air. Whether you're sitting or even standing and starting your walk, just relax in God's presence. If you're walking, there's no need to rush. This is an unhurrying walk. And this is a relaxed walk. So relax your body. And relax your mind. Letting go of any distractions. The busyness of your day. Lord, we pray as we gaze upon you that we would see you through what we see outside. And Lord, we want more of our day to be in your presence and overflowing in praise, reverence, and service. Lord, we want what you want today in this walk or in this sit outside. So with this walking or even sitting, notice your surroundings. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? Take a deep breath in through your nose. What do you smell? you taste? Maybe you've brought a cup of tea with you on this time outside. And what do you feel? Looking around you, ask God to give you a focus on something in your environment, something that you see that catches your attention. Maybe a flower or a rock or even the sky above you. If you're walking, or even if you're sitting, just how does your body respond to seeing that object that God's drawn your attention to? Notice the colors of the object. Might even be, a, it doesn't even have to be an object, it could be a bird. It could be an animal. Just notice it. What are the colors? If you can touch, touch it. What does it feel like? With all your senses, what's the temperature of the object? Is it hot or cold? And 
what does it feel like to really focus your attention on that object in nature? And then with that, restate your question. And, uh, restate the decision you're discerning. Just talking to God out in nature, maybe moving your body at the same time. And then just ask God what he wants you to know. What do you want to impress upon our hearts as we interact with nature? And then <clears throat> notice what happens as you hear God's voice. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? What are you experiencing in your body? And does it have any influence on your decision? It may not. And then if you're walking, just walk on. And move about outside in nature. And talk to God about your tentative decision. Often when we move, it integrates everything. So talk to God. And then when you're back at home or back to your journal, just record your insights from your walk and your time in nature or even your interaction with that object. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And I just want um, to add one thing. This is a book called The Way is Made by Walking. And we walked, nine of us walked the Camino, 71 miles of the Camino de Santiago in Spain. And some of us had things that we were burdened with, decisions we were making. And um, Augustine said, Salvatore Ambulando. Things are solved by walking. And I really believe, especially walking outside, has a very wonderful place in solving things. Just getting out of your environment, wherever it is, in your home where you have time with God. Um, having time with God outside in nature just opens up more. So Salvatore Ambulando, you can look it up. I love that. Things are, uh, the way is made by walking or things are solved by walking. This is a little bit different um, from, a, I think, a Spanish person. The way is made by walking, but same principle. And also, this is a great book. Arthur Paul Bors, Bors, Bors. Really good book if you're ever going to walk the Camino. I'm going to put um, Walking with God in Nature in the description. I... Um, it's good for decision making. It's also good for healing. Um, I had a wonderful healing time with God, walking with God in nature um, in the fall and along the Deschutes River once. So I highly recommend regular walking with God in nature. Be blessed. <laughs>